Hello everyone, this is a little bit different setting than usual. I just want to kind of try this out. So if you haven't watched our apartment tour video, check it over here. It's kind of like the little interview section, but I was like, mm. for anything that's like more sit down pillow talk, I have my pillow right over here. It matches with my shirt, red and pink. So I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit more on a topic that I think some people feel, which is imposter syndrome. And like, in my opinion, the reason why I didn't want to make this video is because People feel like an imposter in different ways and different reasons. So that's why I'm like, mm, it could be a little bit tough to talk about something very soft, but uh, a lot of people like specifically if you're a consultant and you know, like most consultants are supposed to be knowledgeable in their own expertise or area. And if you just come right out of college, it's just like, I feel like, like an imposter, like just better people that know what they want to do or know how to do what the client is asking for. But for me, I don't know anything. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to kind of talk about it because it's kind of related, but also a lot of people I know who are interested in like once they graduate from college or university or whatever, they come out like, oh, I don't know what to do. And I feel like so discouraged because everyone else is better. And usually like, let's say for example, the fan companies or the big five companies or the big four MBB or even companies like Accenture, you may feel imposter syndrome because of the fact that you just feel probably inferior from the others. And you probably don't even feel like you're actually qualified for the job. So I'm just making this video in terms of like how I got through it because like I mentioned in another video over here, I actually had a pretty low GPA at a particular time. Like back in college, I was like, at the lowest was like 2.7, the highest was 2.9. And one of the main reasons why it was like that is because of my freshman year courses. A lot of them were liberal arts, not business. My business classes did so well. At one point I wanted to put my major GPA onto my resume, but in the end it still felt really bad because it wasn't my cumulative. So I ended up taking that off or completely. I didn't put my GPA on the resume at all. So that's just something I wanted to go over because I had to deal with this a lot myself and especially in consulting, especially in tech, if you're not certified, like what do you know? But then once I actually start going into the field, I realized I do know some things and I can just kind of offer up my own experiences and knowledge and skills. So the first thing I want to actually kind of approach you guys with is figure out why you feel imposter syndrome. Is it because of maybe like you think everyone else is better than you? Is it because that like the actual industry or demand is asking a lot more from you than you think you can deliver? Is it something because of maybe pressure of like maybe your family or your friends where they think that you're doing some hot shit, but really you're not. Uh, and you feel like you're probably kind of glamorizing what you're doing. Uh, there's so like so many things out there, just really try to pinpoint why. So for me, I actually thought of my GPA. That was like my main concern. And when I come from like an Asian household, and I'm pretty sure every other household that really values academics probably feels the same way too, is that if you have a low GPA, you're all of a sudden like your confidence is kind of tied towards your GPA. If you have a low GPA, your confidence is low. If you have a high GPA, it's high. But for me, like, because my GPA was low, then it was just like, uh, I, I don't think I qualify for it. Like every time there was an opportunity out there, I'm like, I don't think I'll get it. I, I like when I got the call for an interview with Accenture, I was like, why did they pick me? They, they know my resume, they know my actual like GPA and everything. Why did they pick me? And then the whole time I was like, I had to compensate myself, which is a good thing. Cause at the same time I did grow from it, but at the very same time, it's just like, you don't want to feel like that at any point. You always want to feel confident. But something that I did want to say is that like, once you pinpoint it, try to really talk to yourself as to like, you're better than that. Because a lot of times, for example, if you don't know anything, let's say when we were on site and a client asks you a question, you're like literally two months out from graduation or something like that. And you probably did not even get any training or certification at that time then like, how can you possibly answer that question? So think about it to yourself because the reason why they even hired you in the first place is because they saw potential. So once you realize and acknowledge that, then what? Then you could start to say, okay, what was it that they actually wanted me for? Was it like my background? Was it my technical skills? Was it my internships? Was it my leadership, my teamwork? So bring that to the table because they saw that. So you wanna bring that to the table to the client because they want you to deliver exactly what they saw to the client. For me, let's say for example, my background is very diverse and that's kind of why they like me because of the business and the technology, the leadership and the, the work experience and whatnot, it was very diverse. So what I did mention is like, for example, like, oh, when I did work at this internship, I noticed that my client or at that time, my internship 
company was doing this and I noticed that best practices were that. Then because a lot of times like even though as a technology consultant, they'll still ask questions that they would normally ask maybe a management consultant. They just see consultants as someone that may have the answer. And I mean, like for most big companies, they do ask that anyways, because they think you can leverage your network. And that's also another thing. Most consultants do not know all the answers. Actually, no, no one knows all the answers. It's always about figuring it out. And this is another thing you want to acknowledge. If you're in consulting, they chose you for problem solving. The whole reason why they gave you a case study in the first place is because there's a lot of unknowns. They want to give you a problem and they want to see how you actually attack it and how you approach it, how you give the answer, how you solutionize, how you do the whole thing. And they purposely leave out some information or they make you ask the question. So what I ended up doing was like I actually asked following up and clarifying questions to see really dig down like what did the client actually want? Did the client want more about like clarifications? Did they want to know the answer or do they want a recommendation, have approached something, or they just want to know how other clients have done it. If that's the case, uh, like if the, you want to know how other clients have done it, you may not know it, but you can utilize your network. So this is where most people are like, Oh, but I should know this, right? Like I I'm hired for this reason, but everyone knows you don't know all the answers. Like, almost all of my calls, if they, they even start off with like, oh, it'd be great if you know the answer, but it's okay if you don't, but we just want to know the answer at, at, at like certain points. So uh, like you may also be thinking that like I should be knowing the answers that or else will be losing credibility. How you answer and approach it could be the reason why they want to see credibility. They want to know you actually answer them. You don't just forget the question and never revisit it. And they want to know that you're professional. They want to know that you're really good at a consultant job. So you try your best that you can because at the end of the day, they also know even when you're like 50 years into the industry, you still won't know everything. Otherwise, like, What's the point? <laughs> the reason why we like consulting is because of the fact that you're constantly learning. You're constantly trying all these new things. We're never actually doing everything. So that's just something to kind of think about. Utilize your network, utilize whatever resources you have at hand. You want to be known as maybe someone that's resourceful. So it's not being like lesser than or anything like that. You'll be known as someone who has the answers because you can find the answers. If you don't even try to find the answers, then what's the point? And so that's like exactly how it would be on a case interview, what they're looking for. They're not looking for you to know the answer. They just want to know how you would approach the answer. So think about that. And then if you have like, for example, confidence levels, you feel like whatever answer you have, regardless of the fact of it's real or truth or whatnot, you might think that it's like not right because it's like coming from you or that they, you think they don't trust you. Then you want to back it up with data, back it up with answers and solutions and also recommendations and like say, oh, my other client from so-and-so industry, or like I spoke to our subject matter expert in this industry and they recommended this. So you can mention that it's still going to be the answer, but just be very factual. If you think that's the reason why you're feeling imposter syndrome that you're like, oh, they don't trust you. Well, they got to trust the data. That's, that's kind of why they hired you. They, they hired you because of your network, your resources, your actual expertise. And eventually you'll do get to that. You will actually get to that point where you will build that expertise because of all this experience. So like, even from Workday, we have something called Workday Community. It's kind of like a forum of all questions out there, all even ideas for Workday. So from that, that's actually mostly just, they are literally built to collaborate. That's the whole purpose of it. No one's expected to know the answer and go into circles trying to find that answer. They have this whole forum so people can find the answer for you because they were trying to find it themselves. So once you do that, you already have the answer. Almost every single place has it. Like even if you're a software developer or coder or whatnot, they have so many things out there where you just Google. Like literally when I learned how to like develop my own website from my internship, I was just like told, go Google it. I don't know the answer. Like the, the, my, my internship coordinator or manager, or whatever, they didn't know the answer. They just like, just Google it because like, however you approach it, there's so many ways you can approach it. You just want to make sure you actually tried. So like whenever you have any recommendation and you don't know the answer, this is going to be a whole separate video, by the way, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I did make a graphic on that. Uh, and that's actually mostly on like, what should you do if you don't know the answer? Well, first you want to ask clarifying questions, make sure you have exactly all the information you need, what they want. So you know, you're answering the correct question. And then from there, you try to make your best guess. However, use like whatever resources you have, you can go look online. You can go look with your resources in the same company, the same firm, talk to your team, 
talk to the other people that may be dependent on those decisions. And so like, it's always better to make sure you have all the information you have and then say, okay, I'm gonna need this information to get the right answer rather than giving a fake or untrue answer. Okay, so think about it that way. You don't wanna make sure that like, oh no, I'm, I'm like a deer in headlights. I am not, I don't have the answer. So how am I gonna approach this? You just kind of step back and say, okay, I don't, I don't know the answer, but I will find the answer for you. And that's what they want. They want an answer. So for me, like how I actually deal with imposter syndrome is mostly it's like my confidence from my GPA and from like my background. Like if you haven't listened to my podcast, definitely check it down in the link below. There's some background in terms of like how I was raised for at least with my family. And with that video, with that podcast episode, I kind of talked about how I was kind of treated like I was less than a man. I was like basically treated, basically my family was very misogynistic, even my mom. I was basically raised with a very mindset that like I am amounted to no good. I can't do anything. I can't be like a big CEO or anything like that. So I had to fight through that and try to learn everything on my own. Every time I keep on getting, I ask questions, I'm like a very curious person. But the thing is they just like, I don't know, like go Google it. I'm like, I can't Google everything. At that time, I had no internet, I had nothing. But they never really tried to kind of make me think more than that. They just said like Google it. I'm like, oh, you're not even trying to like guide me questions and say, what do you think about this? But yeah, so that's what I would say is definitely look into the root of your issue and then see like, why are you affected by it? Because I think if you are driven by GPA and then your confidence level is low, or maybe it's by reputation, then maybe it's by like trust. Maybe it's by like how your age. There's so many things you can combat with each of them, but definitely comment down below like which one you think you're dealing with the most. I I'm pretty sure like everyone has dealt with every single one of them at the same time. It's not necessarily one or the other. It's like kind of a mix and a blend. But if you kind of figure that out, you can understand why you feel that way. And then you could start to fight against it. So that way next time like, oh, it's fine. I, I have the answers. And then you just gotta look it up. Uh, a lot of times like, this is kind of why consultants get this reputation that they're bsing everything is like it's half right half wrong um because like we are bsing in the fact that we don't know the answer all the time but we are not bsing it by lying or saying like the wrong thing so we're saying the correct things but we don't have all the information so we try our best to make sure that we at least like appease what the client wants to hear but then we will get back to them with the right information so that's all I have for this video. It's really mostly like how I deal with imposter syndrome or how you should deal with imposter syndrome. Not the only way, of course, but uh, like I've had people who ask me like, how do I actually make people trust me when it comes to consulting? Or how do I seem confident on like a interview? Or how do I actually make myself look better than I am? And I'm like, girl, you are better already, okay? <laughs> you just need to get that confidence and it's really fake until you'll make it. For me, I was like very not that confident and then I'm the way I am today because I faked it and then eventually I learned it and then I made it, okay? Comment down below on what like imposters, what what like issues you have been facing that may be thinking about like what, that may be the reason why you're feeling imposter syndrome or maybe if you got out of it and like, what was it? For me, I actually just kind of like, trial and error, I just did it and I made myself do it to make sure I know how to do it. Thank you guys so much and see you guys next time. Bye.